Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. Good afternoon. I'm Reich Plekis here at 99.3 KTIA and www.theviewfromapew and maxworldlive.com. We welcome you. Thank you for tuning in, turning on, and turning it up in the name of Jesus here in Central Iowa and the World Wide Web. My name is Reich Plekis. I'm your host. And here for the next, oh, 53 minutes or so, myself and my calling guests will be more than happy to enlighten you on not only the Word of God, but what's happening in and around the world as we make it a safer and a better place to live. I want to thank Bob Montserrat for being in the studio and making sure I'm on time with everything. How are you doing today, Mr. Bob? Doing pretty good, and, it, and we're exactly on time. We so are. Just want you, to know. you called me, and I was running across the skywalk. They probably thought I was doing the 50-yard dash or something like that. <laughs> fat man running, fat man down. We'll make that into a movie. <laughs> Anyhow, we have some great guests calling in today. My first guest is none other than Pastor John P. Williams from Chicago, Illinois. And I tell you, Bob, this man is cutting up the pavement in the city of Chicago. And he has got a story to tell and share with us, and he's going to be calling in here in just a brief moment. And I... I I got the pleasure to meet with him two weeks ago at Miss Biscuits. I think that's it down in uh, the uh, Hyde Park area, the South South Loop area of Chicago. And um, then also uh, Shirley Richardson, a very dear evangelist and guest a friend of mine from Chicago, met up with us. And Bob, lo and behold, they know people that know people that know people. Oh, wow. It's like. She's like, oh, did you know like Baby Woo Woo and Little Wayne and Lily Joe and Jojo and Hey Hey, you know, it's like, okay, can I not go anywhere and somebody either know me or they know each other? So <laughs> well, it was good. a small world. <laughs> but I think he is on the phone with us, Pastor John Williams from Chicago, Illinois. How are you, Pastor? Yeah, I'm great, Right? How are you? Hey, I am, I am a blessed mess today. I don't know if you heard me or not, but I did like the 50 yard dash across the skywalk to get into our studios here on time. So welcome to the view from the pew, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Hey, I just want to get right into it. Get into the word, get into the wrestle. Uh, Welcome you to the show. I've been telling you for a couple months now. I want to get you on, but more so I want to tell people the good things that you're doing for Christ in and around the city of Chicago, Illinois, because that definitely is a field that is definitely needing some some uh, fertilization, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, well, one of the th- go ahead. Get first off. Give us the name of your church, real quick. My church is called El Shaddai, the Church of New Beginnings, and we're on uh, thirty five hundred nine West Chicago Avenue on Chicago's West Side. All right, and how did you fall into this ministry? Give us the the lowdown. Well, nine years ago, I, I was. Uh, Doing another type of street ministry, uh, I was I was a gang member. I was a gang leader, and I walked into a church, and the spirit of the Lord fell on me, and I got saved. And it seemed like from that point, you know, everything just broke loose in my life. I mean, a lot of things just started to fall apart even at that point. And but all the time, God was telling me that I called you to be a pastor. Fast forward nine years, you know, to this date now, uh, God ordained me and, and installed me the pastor of my church. Uh, I took over for my pastor who has been pastoring for the last six years. Uh, and so I am truly called to pastor, but my, but my main, uh, I, I believe one of my main giftings is, is the evangelistic call of my life. I, I love the streets. I love street people. I love all people. And, uh, that's really where God really has anointed me and blessed me to, to, to uh, really win souls for him in the streets. Man. And so I do a lot of outreaches. Yeah. A lot of outreaches. Now, I, I was following you and you gave out like, and I'll probably exaggerate here, you know, in Christ, of course, it's, we call it evangelism through exaggeration in Christ. But you handed out like what, 20,000 bottles of water or 2,000 bottles of water or something like that? Probably hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah, all total. <laughs> yeah. And and tell us, you are now known as the crack church, right? Well, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, Crack and a lot of a lot of drugs going on in this area, and what I've told the, the the dope dealers in this area is that I'm getting ready to shut it down. 
by way of fasting and praying, but also I'm, I'm, I'm going after all the crackheads. I'm going after all the people that are bound in addictions who are suffering because nobody in third grade says, you know what, I'm going to grow up and be a crackhead. You know, somewhere down the line, something happened. And so I'm trying to get to the root of their problems. So I, I, I make myself very visible. I walk through the neighborhoods. I knock on doors. I'm always present at the church, some, some form, sometime during the day. And I'm just determined to reach the lost and reach those people. One of the guys told me, said, Pastor, well, you know, you got, a, you got your work cut off. You. If you think you're going to shut our spots down and, and get these people off drugs. I said, well, I serve a big God. Amen. Well, I tell you, you know, I, I ran into somebody that knows you and they said that people, when they see you with the hamburgers and hot dogs and water, that they run to you like that that's crack because they know that you are not only feeding them the word, but you're feeding them in love and feeding them food. Yes. You know, one of the things I can tell you is many times I, 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 I was in a, 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 a organization called the Black Peacestone Rangers and we went into all uh, to Islamic and, and, and other uh, religions. And so I, I had a conversion out of that. But one of the things I remember is people used to always give me tracts. And my mother would send me Bibles, and I would throw that stuff away. What the Spirit of the Lord told me when I began to pray about what to do and how to take over as a pastor, he said, I want you to bring servanthood evangelism back. I want you to go in restaurants and serve them, white tables. I want you to go in the community and just really show them a church that really loves them. I, I'm not disputing the tracks because sometimes we do need to refer to the word and have something that we can, you know, fight with doing our daily course. But the main thing that I'm trying to do is, is show people that, you know what, there's a church, there's a pastor, there's some people that really love you. And are people receiving you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one of the, one, this, this past Sunday, one of the guys I've been working on him for, for he's been coming to the, to that, to the pass outs for maybe the last couple of months. He came to, to, to the service. He was, he was so broken, but God restored him. And then he actually gave his life back to Christ, rededicated himself. And so I'm, I'm beginning to see the fruit. But mostly what I'm seeing is I'm pastoring a neighborhood from the outside in. A lot of them are not coming in the church. I tell them all the time, I'm your pastor. I speak words over, I stop them and, 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 and make, almost demand them to allow me to pray for them because I know the life that they're living. So I want to make sure that they're covered. And what I'm seeing is slowly but surely, I'm seeing fruit begin to sprout up. Amen. And, and this church fell into your lab, correct? Yeah. Well, it's, it was kind of a crazy story. One of my best friends years ago, he was, he was a, he was a GD and I was a stone and we used to do music together. I, I, I moved back to Chicago early in the two thousands and I was homeless. This guy takes me in and I never knew that he was his, at the time. His father was the pastor of, of, of El Shaddai church. And so he, his father passed and they gave him the church. I remember years ago, he used to tell me, he said, John, you have to pay attention to the next move of God. And what he, what he was saying was, he said, you'll never know. God might tell me to sit down and make you the pastor. Well, last year, God began to uh, visit him in his dreams, and God told him to ordain me, but also install me over the church. And people used to say, well, Pastor Lindsay, what are you going to be doing? And so he said, you know what? I'm going to go to church. He's going to be the pastor. Well, lo and behold, uh, God had a, had, had a, had a mightier plan. He was just, he was just looking for some obedience and some faithfulness. He ended up giving Pastor Lindsay a pretty, uh, uh, nice sized church with, 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 with some property and some other things that he's taken over. And so God all, all, all the time knew that he was, you know, he knew what he was doing. So yes, it did fall into my lap. You know, it was an incredible, incredible, uh, journey, incredible way, but I just, I just give God all the glory, all the glory. Amen. And, 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 it's not a huge church by any means, but it's no. a church that's activated by Christ and Christ's word. Amen. Yes. It's, it's definitely activated by the spirit. God, God is a God. He, he is, he, he has told me he is reestablishing prayer, healing and deliverance in this church. So what I did was I, I, I asked questions from some of the elders and some of the mothers and even the pastor, what was going on when your father years ago first started this church? They used to have canes and walkers, and they would put them on the walls and the ceiling because people were getting healed and delivered. So God is reconstructing some things. Sometimes, and, 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 I, and, and I love all people, but sometimes everybody's not willing to build. Everybody's not a builder. So God was cleaning up some things, and some people left, and some people still don't know which way they're going to go. But in the, at, the, at the end of the day, I got about a, a, a small congregation of people who are truly tapped into the move of God, who are faithful, and we're going to go from there. God says, don't despise small beginnings. So it's not about the people. It's about what, what, what I impart into these people. I'm responsible for covering them in prayer. I'm responsible for teaching and preaching them into their purpose. 
And once that begins, once that process begins, they're going to go out and disciple and do the same thing. I know that this church, though it may be small, is getting ready to be packed to, to capacity. I mean, it's, I, I, I see us having to stretch out and, 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 and possibly go into another building because God is really doing something. Like I said, I'm not just pastoring inside of a church. I'm outside beyond the walls, walking the blocks, talking to the guys, you know, joking with them. They, they even try to come and sit with me. And I tell them, I said, I know you're sitting on these corners and you're trying to hide from the police, but every time you sit here, I'm going to give you a word. I'm going to put script oh, on your head. All right, I tell you, man, you, I love you because you get excited in Christ. That's what it's about. You know, people need to know nowadays that God is a good God and that he's greatly to be praised, you know, that he can make life exciting for us. And that's, you know, you and I and, and Evangelist Shirley, when we were sitting there, what, is that, is it Miss Biscuits? Is that what the name of the restaurant was? Yes, Miss Biscuits on 54 The Wild. Yes, you you got to give a shout out to Miss Biscuits. But when we were yeah. sitting there in the restaurant, I mean, you and Shirley were just like, I mean, it was like you, the two of you were just bubbling over and flowing over in, in ministry right there in the restaurant, you know, and, and she knew who you knew, you knew who she knew. And it was like, you know, oh, home week right there. But you know, that's what God is all about. God is about relationship. He's wanting to remove us from religion and move us forth into relationship. Yes, absolutely. Mm. You know, there's a there's a remnant that God is raising up in this in this in this time, and it seems like even you know even as Shirley and I were talking, there, there, there's remnant people that are coming together that that some of us didn't even know. You know, just like he told Elijah, I got seven thousand that didn't bow. There are some people who are anti-religion who just want to see the kingdom of God be glorified. See, I'm, God told me when I first took. When I, when I prayed about this and when, when, when I was, you know, realizing I was going to get ordained and, and it was getting ready to happen, God told me, John, you're not going to be famous. I'm not trying to, you, 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 you're going to give me the glory. See, my, my job is to make the name of Jesus Christ higher than every other name. I done stood on street corners and called out other leaders' names. Jeff Ford, people called out Larry Hoover. Oh, this is King Jesus City. These are his blocks. These are his people. And this is his reign. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, we, we're we delighted that you just can come here and share with us uh, during this first segment. Um, you know, we're going to go to station break here shortly, but we want you to stay on the line with us. But more so, I want to know, what is God purposing for El Shaddai Ministries? What's he purposing for El Shaddai to do? Is he is he making you a church of believers to go out and reach those souls? The, your, your motto is, every soul is reachable, correct? Yes, every soul is reachable. That is a that is a, a, a God. I, I I recently, maybe in the last year or so, I, I got rebaptized. I wasn't not that I wasn't certain, but I wanted to. I, I, something just hit my spirit, and I went to my uncle's church, and my uncle baptized me. And it seemed like as I came out of the water, that that that, that the mantle that was on my grandfather years before me, and he he he's since gone on with the Lord, that his mantle was on me. So I started researching my grandfather, and that was one of his very uh, 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 favorite sayings. But if you just notice the saying, it's a very evangelistic statement, every soul is reachable. And that's what we believe in our heart. What God has told us here at El Shaddai is we're getting ready to raise up teams, and especially teams of men, to be able to go in, 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 in South America and Mexico and different places where the cartels and the gangs are and resurrect Jesus Christ, bring the truth of Jesus Christ to those communities on barrios. And so God is, 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 is building, uh, uh, we're, he, he's locating me and, and, and connecting me with people who have the desire to be fishermen of men. I tell you, I had a question just hit me, and it says, "Right, is every pastor you know a reform crack addict or reform uh, ex felon?" And I'm not even going to answer them. I'm just going to let them tune in and wonder why, you know, and wonder. But, <laughs> you know, um, you you do not have a felon pass, correct? You are not an ex con. No, no, I'm not an ex con. I don't have a felony. I, I I I was involved in a lot of activities out on the street, and I'm going to tell you, right, I go hard because I went hard in the street. You got I, to, I, man. I, 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 I stuck up. I, I, I sold drugs. I gangbanged for many years. I was a leader for many years in, in several different cities throughout the Midwest. And I've traveled from, from New York to California doing the gang thing. When God delivered me, see, I didn't lose my rank. I, I just changed dance partners. See, I, I was a chief in the street, so I'm a chief in the Holy Spirit. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. He is excited for Jesus here in the house, in the studio. We have Pastor John P. Williams from El Shaddai Church of Chicago with us here at The View from the Pew today. Stay tuned. Turn in, turn on, and turn it up. We got more to come right after this break. We'll be back in just about five, maybe 10, maybe 15 seconds or more. Right Pleck is here at The View. 
If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. My name is Justin Bennett with Strong Tower Consulting, where we passionately coach individuals, families, and businesses to make better financial decisions that help create success and eliminate financial stress. I offer a free 30-minute consultation where we find out where your situation is. I explain how I do my coaching services, then it's up to you whether you want to continue. The Bible has, depending on who you believe, 800 to 2,000 scriptures that talk about money alone. So pretty important subject in God's eyes. That's one of the things that I enjoy doing is help them see God's ways of handling money. You know, it's interesting. Most people that I ask, what would it be like to be debt free? The common response is, I don't know. I don't think it's possible. But in 90 days, most of my clients go from, I don't think it's possible to, I'm excited. In two years or less, I will be debt free. There's no tricks, no gimmicks, nothing being sold here. It's just learning how to do money well. This is a strong tower financial hour. Well, we help people go from being broken, scared, to having hope with a plan. I'm Michael Libby. I'm the host of Insight on Business, the News Hour. We're seen live at 8.45 each Monday morning at Webcast One Live or whenever you want on my blog or on the Internet. So what qualifies me to talk about advertising, marketing, and consumer trends? Well, it's my business. Inside Advertising, Marketing, and Communications has helped dozens of companies, small, medium, and large, learn how to use advertising correctly. And we pass that information on to you each and every week. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. Welcome to, back to WWW from the Pew. My name is Reich Plekis and also 99.3 KTIA FM. Want to make sure that you know what's happening tomorrow night here in Des Moines and also on uh, Friday, Apostle John Eckhart from Chicago, Illinois is, is a mighty man of God. He is going to be ministering and teaching a couple workshops. He has traveled 70 nations and he's authored over 40 books, but more so he is has an international ministry and a prophetic ministry. Uh, bringing apostolic churches together since 1995. He's going to be at New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries. That's New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries at 530 Northeast Broadway here in Des Moines, Iowa. Pastor Stephanie Moody is the pastor there. And the phone number if you want details is 515-334-8892. 515-334-8892. And I tell you, Apostle John Eckhart will be here tomorrow night um, at uh, uh, 7 p.m and also the second at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can register for the workshops at www.eventbrite.com, www.eventbrite.com. And I want to ask this, please keep Apostle Eckhart in your prayers and also Pastor Moody. Pastor Moody lost um, 
her husband lost his grandfather. Uh, passed away on last uh, Saturday, I believe. Then another family member passed away yesterday, and Apostle Eckhart's sister passed away yesterday. So the devil is 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 quick at work in regards to what Pastor Moody has seen come to fruition at New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries. But she is she is not dismayed by any stretch of the imagination. That woman is is flat on her face in prayer. And she will leave that church with every every ounce of carpet fiber on her or in her nose or something from just praying and supplication there. She just wants nothing to but sit and commune with God. And so uh, she is hosting that event with Apostle John Eckhart, and he is going to whisk in and whisk out, but do what God has ordained him to do. We're back with my guest, Pastor John P. Williams from El Shaddai Ministries in Chicago, Illinois. And this man has a ministry for the streets. He's. I think he's singing in the background. <laughs> Something. He's about ready to get I'm a shout here. on. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I'm just so excited to uh, to be here on the show with you today. Uh, I've been looking forward to it, and I know that God is definitely going to get the glory out of it. Man, I tell you, all money aside, Pastor, what is the one thing you want to see come to pass through El Shaddai? If you could have uh, anything happen, anything come to fruition. I would like to see, even even if just in the neighborhood where where my church is located, we'll, we'll start there. I would like to see the fear of the Lord cleanse the hearts of the people, and that people really get a real touch from God. You know, not that that you know what I went to church and they shouted me happy, they preached me happy. Where the where where where, where, the, where the Lord says, you know what, I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and to really see the people that everybody wrote off, that everybody said they'll never be saved, could come together. And, and not only get saved, but be, begin to live according to how God has planned. I, I, I want to see this community change. You know, no more gentrification moving out. I want to, this is the place to live. I want to see a kingdom. The, the, the Bible says there's a city on top of a hill. I want to be able to see the city on top of a hill right here on the west side of Chicago. And one of the, where they've said it's been the worst of the worst when it comes to crime. I want to see those same people get the same opportunity to receive their salvation and be able to live it by way of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, one thing you said to Evangelist Shirley and, and myself there at the restaurant was you want to see Inglewood transformed. Is that correct? Yes, there, there, that's that's one of the key areas, I believe, in Chicago that the Lord is really focusing on. And I'm, I, I'm in a, a, a fellowship with a few different uh, remnant organizations that do a lot of outreach, do a lot of street ministry there. And that is a place that is a place where God He has said to me that in through, by way of prayer that Inglewood is going to be a place for healing. There's going to be mass healings going on in Inglewood. Inglewood has been labeled, you know, uh, for, for some time now, one of the worst of the worst of the worst throughout this country, uh, in, 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 especially, you know, black on black crime, shooting and things of that nature. And God is coming to a place like that just to show that his power, just like, you know, nobody ever expected Jesus to come out of Bethlehem, but God, he looks for those type of places. He looks for the ghettos. He looks for the hood. To, to, to bring out his glory. He, see, it's not about, you know, the, 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 the fancy neighborhood or the, or the political stuff that's going on here in Chicago. It's about where God decides to put his finger down. And I believe God has put his finger down on Inglewood, in Chicago, Illinois. You know, you have to think that if, if God can transform um, a, a mountain and move it, that he can transform just a suburb of, of Chicago, Illinois. Absolutely. I mean, we're still serving a God that it was a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. 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 I believe God is looking just for some, some people to say yes. I'm believing God is looking for some people who will say yes to, to, to what he's doing, yes to his plans, yes to the move of God. Sometimes, you know, and, and I understand now, even especially being a pastor, why God doesn't, doesn't really show us everything. Because if we knew everything that we would have to do, a lot of us would turn back, you know, from day one. So God gives it to us gradually so we can keep seeking him, keep uh, uh, learning his, his plan, keep letting him order our footsteps. But I believe God is getting ready to transform not only Chicago, Illinois, but it's going to it's going to spread throughout the nation. You know, God is looking at America. He's not just looking at Chicago. He's looking at this country. He's looking at where it first started at. And he's looking at where it is right now. And I really believe that America has truly been blessed. But we have turned our back. We have walked away from God. Do you think that our government has something to do with that, that, you know, we're turning our backs on on God through our government? I think there's a I think there's a group of people that's that's kind of controlling the government and giving them the ideas. I think that 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 you know those those, those seven mountains that we hear about 
there's 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 uh, powers that be on those mountains that are really controlling what's what's going on. And it's like you know, my my daily prayer is God overturn every law, oh, uh, everything that doesn't line up with Your Word, because even even the laws and even 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 now there, there's so much shooting going on in, in in our communities in our cities. It's like we're getting immune to it. It's like we accept it. And we're supposed to have all this authority, all this power, all this Holy Spirit. But because we're not unified, because we're not coming together in prayer, we're not seeing the power executed where it needs to be. Well, I tell you, God is looking for a church without spot or blemish. Do you think that that day is is coming closer than what we think? Or do you think that we're just such a mess right now that it's never going to happen? I think it's coming closer than we think. And I believe that it's not just in one denomination or one group of people or economics or, 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 or their color. I just think it's the people that really have the heart of God, who really have been living by faith, people that are overcoming, not survivors, overcomers, victorious people that God is, 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 is working through. And I believe when it comes together, we're going to see, we're going to see what it looks like in heaven. You know, everybody, you know, everybody has their idea of what that's going to be like, but God wants us to have a little taste of heaven right here. He wants us to be able to do it right here. That was that. That was the initial plan. So as God, as, as He gives us heaven, He wants us to give Him back the earth. So I believe that time is now. Mm. Amen, John. This is uh, Bob, and I had a question. You were a gang leader. Were you a gang leader in the area you're living now, or your church is in? Some of the time I was, and you know what? What, what, what what's funny, Bob? Actually, uh-huh. about about uh, early this month, I did an outreach. We call it Servanthood Saturdays, and I did an outreach, and a young man came to the grill for some food, and you know, he said, "I know you." And I knew all the time where I knew him from, but I let him, I let him, you know, kind of, you know, waddle in for a minute. You know, years ago, I, I, I had, I, I used to be in the projects not that far from me. They're, they're torn down now. And, and he was one of the, you know, one of the customers. And I'm going to tell you, Bob, I really didn't feel bad because I'm really delivered from my past. I mean, I know who I am now. I believe God allowed me to sleep with the enemy. So when I get into the spirit, I know how to warfare against the enemy. But the thing was, here it is, I, 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 I wasn't the cause of him getting uh, uh, bound up in his addiction, but I truly added to it. And here it is now, God, he, he, he's got me in a position to try to bring him and deliver him out of it. You know, so I, you know, it's, it, 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 it's kind of a, a give and take thing. But yes, definitely this part of the area was, was some of our stumping grounds. Yeah, and that was the question you were answering my second question, too, is that, you know, how do those, those people that you knew years ago see you now? And you're basically kind of answering that. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny that, that people always, uh, 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 you know, try to take you back to your past. They can't let go of who you were or what they think you are. And so sometimes it's hard for them to realize, you know, that God has really changed you and changed your heart. I mean, I was even doing some studying today about David. And, and you know, it seemed like when, when, he, when, when, when his father sent him to go to his brothers when they went to battle, getting ready to fight the lion, he had his David had been anointed. He had, the, the oil had been poured on him. He had, he had been smeared by God. But yet his brothers, they were hating on him. They, you know, what are you doing here? What are you coming for? And, 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 and so people will always try to remind you of that. But I, I, I try to focus my thoughts on the Lord and keep focusing on what God is saying. Yeah, but I would think also that they can see the change in you. That would have an impact on them also. There's a lot. You know, to be honest with you, some of the older guys, when I see them, when I see them one-on-one, they say, man, that, that, that's the, man, that was a great move you made. You know, I really do it. But I think a lot of them just have, have fear. A lot of them are fear. You know, we, you, you know, sometimes we get so fearful of what people think or what people are going to say, and that, and that really just paralyzes us. You know, I just give God the glory that I was able to come from under that bondage, and now I'm in a free place, and my job is to go back and reach men. That's, that's really, my, you know, one of the greatest parts of my assignment. God has is, 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 is birthed in me this, this, this idea of a man cave, and actually we're getting ready to uh, start that in a couple of weeks where we're going to just start with a simple male Bible class just to really deal with the things that men are going through, but ultimately to be able to build a house, have, have a place where, where men can come and we can, we can do some things uh, socially, but also I want to give them the spiritual side, but I also want to be able to give them the practical side, everyday living side that they need. Our men are out of place. When the men get into their rightful place, everything is going to change. The family is going to change. The church, the community, our cities will change. Come on and, now. Come on. And, preach. And, yeah. So it's, so it's the man cave that God has given me. David, when, you know, it's funny when David went into that cave, that's when his brothers and his family, that's when they, they began to support him when those 400 men came in the cave with David. And so I know that there's a lot of distraught brothers that are going through some things. Even me as a pastor, this walk is not what everybody thinks it is, you know? And so I'm just saying here to say that I know that there's a desire for God to really restore men. 
everything in the church, the majority of the time is geared around women. And, and that's fine because we need, because we got some powerful sisters. But I know when a man stands up, even like with our children, you know, the, 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 the mother, she has to argue back and forth with the kids. But when the father comes in, it seems like the whole context, everything begins to shift when, when his presence is there. And we need our presence of the men in the families. We need them in the community and we definitely need them in the church. Amen. I tell you, you spoke about David, the story of David. I tell you, you know, I was at an event, Mothers Against Violence here in Iowa this last weekend. And, you know, the the, the word was thick and the, the music was great. I mean, people were dancing like David. I was afraid they were going to dance right out of their clothes during that event, you know. And, and I was like, you know, what what are you doing here, Lord? What are you doing? And and my next uh, guest coming up uh, for the second half is Justin Haynes. And I mean, this man is remaking churches through fashion the, through the passion of his fashion and, and uh, pastor Williams, I just, I just want to tell you that, you know, God is doing mighty things through you and for you and in you uh, there in the city of Chicago. And, and we delight in seeing what's happening there. You know, you and I uh, left the restaurant that day and I said, get ready to go buy some paint because you're going to paint your paint the outside of your, your church. Did that happen yet? Yes. Well, I painted this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, he said, Bobby goes, uh, you know, it's funny you say that. We're going to paint the outside. I was just going to go get some paint. And I've never seen his church. That's confirmation. Yeah, that's confirmation. <laughs> God just God is good that way. God wants us to be made anew and afresh. Not only his temple, you know, us and our, our, our clothing, our apparel, but our inner being. If you want to listen, stay tuned, Pastor Williams, for our second half. We're going to be bringing in Justin Haynes after this station break. My name is Reich Plekas, and I tell you what, it's getting hot in here. We always have church in the studio. I'm glad to be here at 99.3 KTIA FM and WWW, The View from the Pew. My name is Reich Plekas. Stay tuned. Tune in, turn on, turn it up in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risks. 
I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do, I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. Welcome back to WWW, The View from the Pew, and my name is Reich Plekis. I'm your host here today. We're back for the second half. We're, Jesus is in the, the studio. I tell you what, every every single time I come, he's already here, Bob. I can't say he's not, right. but it's a, every day is a new day that I come in and, and, and get to meet somebody else and bring them on the air, and and the people that I, I just reach out to and they, they reach back, it's, it's just a blessing, and I, I truly believe that Pastor John Williams is going to be blessed there in Chicago. I do want to remind you that Apostle John Eckhart is coming tomorrow and August 2nd, um, the 1st at 7 p.m., the 2nd at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can register for those uh, workshops at www.eventbrite.com by searching John Eckhart, E-C-K-H-A-R-D-T, in Des Moines. He'll be at New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries, 530 Northeast Broadway, Des Moines. You can contact the church there, uh, 515-334-8892. Pastor Stephanie Moody has been praying and fasting all week for this event. She's lost, I believe, two loved ones, and uh, Apostle John Eckhart's sister just passed away yesterday. So we are praying for him and his family and lifting them up at the same time. So check out Apostle John Eckhart, August 1st and 2nd at New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries, 530 Northeast Broadway. They welcome you to the house of God. And I tell you what, the deliverance is going to be hot and heavy in the house for those sessions. My second guest is a man that is is making, molding, and regenerating not only the church, but people uh, through his passion, but through fashion. And I found him. His name is Justin. Justin, you got to say, is it Hines or Haynes? It's Haynes. Haynes. All right. I tell you, I, I reached out to you and I looked at, at, at all your photos. I was doing a little bit of what, what do they call that? Um, creeping. <laughs> You mean Facebook stuff? <laughs> Facebook <laughs> creeping. And I was like, man, this man is the next Prada. Oh, thank you, thank you. You just say I'll receive that. that. <laughs> I do. I really do. I really do. <laughs> so tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, where you're at, and and how uh, how God is especially moving through what you're doing through fashion. Well, um, like you said, my name is Justin Haynes. I am um, now um, CEO and founder of Justin H, uh, where we specialize in bringing clothing. Um, and everyday fashion to your everyday life. Um, not where I started. I started um, in regular retail. Uh, 16 years ago, started working at The Gap, just worked my way right up the ladder. From there, went to a prominent shoe store and then started working for UK-based luxury stores. And then from there, I was kind of, my five-year plan was kind of just done and over with. Um, and in 2010, I just decided to actually step out and you know, move on my own and start Justin H, which has been a passion for mine. I was doing it on the side since high school. Um, it was something I was scared about, something I was not sure about. But I had to step out on faith and actually do it and make it happen. Um, so it just happened to the point where um, my job was actually re- relocating my position. And then that was a prime opportunity for me to go out and start my dream. Um, Justin H has been established and branded for two years now, thank the Lord. And um, we've been moving pretty well uh, my goal and my goal is to make sure that i bring fashion to people's everyday life um regardless of what you feel your style may be i want to be, be able to be able to style you and make sure that you are in the best clothing that rep, you know that still um keeps a modest apparel um i'm not into making people revealing and you know you know really not making sure that they don't look their best. My, my, my goal is to make sure what we do at, at here as a brand at Just Nation to make sure that you look your best regardless. And that's making sure that you are modest, you're covered up, and that you do still are fashionable. And um, what I'm trying to do is not really more so bring 
um, myself into the fashion world that's already established because there's a ton of great designers there. I'm trying to build my own fashion world to the point where people can join my fashion world and become and be comfortable in doing what they feel is right. Well, I tell you, that's why I, I did scout you and reach out to you is because the small fact that this, you are taking modesty to a, a different level. You know, um, my daughter is a young woman. She's 20 years old and, and she's virtuous. I mean, she she's 20. She's a virgin, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. And she's going to college in Chicago. And and uh, when Abercrombie and Fitch, I don't know if I could say that, but I just did. If that, that very large chain came out and said that they're going to cater to the size 12 and below, and my daughter's a size 14, my daughter said, I'm writing a paper. With right. all the discrimination that goes on in today's world, all the racism that goes on in today's world, I'm going to talk about discrimination and racism in clothing and retail. And um, in, in one of her classes, it's a, uh, she was in a communications class and she had to write about something. And she brought that out that, you know, here she is, a godly woman, woman trying to serve her ministry through the, the university that she attends. I'll just say it, DePaul University. And she says, I don't need to expose myself. I don't need to have hoochie mama shorts and hoochie mama tops, you know, go into class. I, I can I can dress modestly. I can be a, a well-dressed college student in a very astute. It's the largest Catholic university in the United States. I did not know that, Bob. Bob's on the air with me, but, um, yeah, they are now the largest Catholic and she's not even Catholic. She's non-denom, but she, she said, you know, I don't have to dress like a hoe to go to class. And, and she has men knocking on her door and she's like grades first, God first grade second, you know, (laughs) but that's what I liked about your pictures because you are reaching people and you're teaching them to, to walk upright pull your pants up and, and to be fashionable and they are becoming a palette, which is, is, is something to be said in itself. Amen. Right. I mean, just going back to that, a lot of different other, other industries in the fashion world that lives today. Um, you see that, you see that they only cater to a size zero, size two, 12 below, you know, and then that, that gives some people um, in the size 12 and above, it, it, it's not a confidence boost at all. You know, they don't feel like there's certain styles that people want to wear, but somehow they just can't because a lot of stores don't cater to their needs. And that's one thing I want to just make to do is to be able to cater to all sizes, all shapes, all forms, all races, and to still be able to dress you fashionably, but with some respect. You know, I want my clothing to be able to go out, um, that you be able to wear on an interview in church, wherever you go, I want this fashion to be an everyday lifestyle for you, not just something that you can just wear to the mall or not something, you know, like you said, going back to those poo poo type of shorts. I, that's not my style. I want to make sure that whatever I dress you as something that if you wear it to church, you can also wear it outside of church as well. And it's something that you can actually maintain your fashion presentation. Now, you're in Springfield, Massachusetts right now, correct? I am. And, and the East Coast is the fashion mecca. Right. So do you feel that this was is, was a, an ordained placement for you to be put? Because were you originally from Massachusetts area or did you relocate? I am originally from Massachusetts. Um, okay. I did actually um, set up a little bit for my job, but I am originally from Massachusetts. The reason why I wanted to start here, and this is something that I felt that I had to do, and it's something I owe to this city. Um, this city is not a large populated city. Um, it's very small. It's not keen on fashion. You know, it's more um, keen on music and more activities like that, but it's not a fashion-based city. And my goal was, and I always said, that I had to start where I grew up. I wanted to make sure that this brand launched here where I grew up. I never wanted this city to say that, you know, Just Nature was someone that was here, but went somewhere else to start. I wanted to give this city a chance. Has it been hard? It has been extremely hard just to build this area up to a fashion standpoint where I feel that they should be and where, you know, I feel that fashion should be regardless, you know, and it's fine in two years, but I have to say that I have reached some people and I believe that this was my goal to stay here and to start here. Not saying I will stay here throughout. I believe that there's a higher and a, a higher platform and a bigger platform that God has taken me to. But I do know that he wanted me to start here just so this is the area that I grew up in. And I never wanted to be said that Springfield, that I was a native of Springfield and didn't start in my own area. All right. Uh, you know, um, we're going to take a station break here in just a couple of seconds, but we are speaking with Justin Haynes 
H-A-Y-N-E-S. And I tell you what, you want to check him out, you can go to my page or you can also find him at Facebook. But we'll be back with more to share here at The View from the Pew. My name is Reich Plekis, also at 99.3 KTIA FM. Also, I want to share some information about a lost boy in Illinois. We'll be right back after this. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast1live.com. Welcome back to The View from the Pew 99.3 KTIA FM. My name is Reich Plekis, your host here for the day. Um, I want to tell you about a seven-year-old boy that's missing from Riverdale, and people from Illinois reach out to me because I'm there so often, but Darnell Dominic Anderson was last seen Monday in the south suburbs in the Riverdale area of Chicago and has not been seen since Monday. He's three foot 11 um, and weighs 52 pounds. He was last seen wearing a dark blue polo shirt and black shorts with bleach stains on it, and he's wearing uh, has he has red writing red red writing on one leg and a bruise on his lip, according to the alert. If anyone has any information to the whereabouts of uh, Dom, Darnell Dominic Anderson, please contact Riverdale Police Department at. Uh, 708-841-2203 or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 800-843-5678. We just ask the Lord deliver him safely and unharmed back to his rightful home. And we're praying for Darnell Dominic Anderson at this time. We're back for the second half for the the quarter, the, th- the third quarter. Yeah, more like a quarter. You the quarter. <laughs> and um, we're with my uh, phoning guest, uh, Justin Haynes. And I tell you, this man is is making over the fashion world uh, one soul at a time. Welcome back, Justin. Thank you for having me. And I tell you, I, I want to talk real quickly about, um, you know, how you got your, your start and the, 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 the men and the women that you're putting on the platform, that you're putting on the walkway, they are not scantily dressed at all by any means. No. Tell us how you got to that conclusion. What made you say, okay, we can do this thing and bring it to another level and make sure that they are covered up? What got me to this level was just the consistency that I do. And I had to make sure that I pull myself into the model that I represent. Um, I don't walk around 
pants hanging down, you know, making sure that my uh, my clothing parts or my body parts are hung out. And I want to make sure that whoever is in my brand represents who, who I am and they represent me. And that's where the conclusion came from. Um, I wanted to actually bring back more of the 1960s and 70s where people were actually clothed. You know, th- that style of clothing was there was it was still nice and it was still modest and it also was fashion fashionable and trendy and that's what I wanted to bring more of a modern vintage style um, to this day and age. And I tell you, you're using real people to to show this off to showcase your works, correct? I am using real people. Um, what I was decided to do when I first started um, was actually, you know. I wanted to build my own models. I wanted to actually have my own model base instead of, you know, going through any agencies. You know, a lot of people want to model uh, with the confidence that they have, you know, um, just to build confidence, you know, so much, you know, to go, you know, for callback fees and so on and so forth. So I decided to put it in my own hands and decided to train my own models to where I feel that they should be. You know, I decided to bring, you know, what they do in the fashion world. I decided to build, like I'm building my own fashion world. I want to be able to train up and coming models who want, that we have to feel in that passion to do it. And we're not size zero who are of all sizes and range. Um, I want to be able to use them um, to be able to show off my clothing. Cause like I said, we're dealing with people from everyday life. And, and reaching out to, okay, we're just going to get into this now. The, the broken down, busted up pastors and churches in the, in the communities, you know, can we redress these people one, one church at a time so that they can get these ministries in the rightful standing so that we, we can be returned to where we're supposed to be going. Can we do this together or not? I believe we can. Um, like you said, it has to be done together. It's nothing that I can do alone. Um, the pastors and the congregations, not really the congregations, because the congregations lead off from their leaders. So like, the leaders have to be willing to do that, and they have to start with them. They have to start with them. They have to look in the mirror and say, I want to change. Not just, you know, you know, spiritually, you know, but they need a physical change too as well. People don't know their presentation is everything. Now you look on the outside, you know, count a lot. I was just saying this during the break. I said, you know, I know a pastor that has a busted down, broken up church that they keep putting plastic on the windows every winter. And how do they be, how do they expect to be taken as an international ministry if they can't pay their light bills and can't keep windows in except for plastic? I just said this. Exactly. And then how can pastors get up and preach prosperity and even preach and even tell the young people or the older people how to dress and how to look good, you know, and they're not. You know, or if they're telling them, and people have to realize, too, it doesn't take a fortune to look good. It doesn't take thousands of dollars either to have an Armani or anything like that. It just takes time and effort to pull your outfit together and to look good. And in all, and in always, and pastors need to understand, too, there's always not, I think they're so stuck in that, you know, basic browns, blacks, and I'm trying to do this, you know, because I'm trying to live holy, and I want it to be seen holy. And I, you, you hear some of the remarks that I've heard of some people, you know, because they wore orange ties that they've been brought in the office because of that. What else are we, I mean, really seriously, is that really the the uh, the focus? I mean, is that the, really the main focus why we need to bring people in the office? It needs to be, uh, that's a stipulation that I, I believe that we need to kind of make sure that that's actually brought to a standard of looking good and that you can, and that's, it's all about confidence. If someone's confident to wear an orange tie and they're still saved and they're living holy, what does that have to do with anything? All right, now, what's your upbringing? What's your, your spiritual background? I'm non denomination. My mom is actually a pastor, believe it or not. Uh, she is a pastor of Abundant Life, Worship and Praise, Tabernacle. And I, I was brought up Baptist, uh, straight Baptist, you know. Um, you know, when strictly by tradition, you know, everything was strictly black suit. You know, you were basically kind of nailed. If you came in with a yellow suit, they thought you were some kind of pimp or something, you know. Um, <laughs> but now, you know. <laughs> That's you know, really it important. makes me laugh because you say that because uh, I, I just had some uh, gospel artists in the city this last weekend <laughs> for Mothers Against Violence. And one of them was uh, was going to be singing at a church. And we had to interview and I said, I don't have a suit to wear. I've lost 83 pounds. I'm not going to put on a 6X suit and bind it up. So it looks like I'm a dialysis patient with a bag <laughs> hanging or anything. I said, I'm going to come in here in my linen short outfit and you're going to like it or not. And he said, Reich. Next week, I'm going to have somebody wearing linen shorts to church. You're going to you're going to bust me out. I said, well, you know what? I've moved from religion to relationship, Pastor. Exactly. Exactly. And so I want you to keep on keeping on like you're doing, Justin, Pastor Pope, Apostle Haynes from the fashion world of, of Massachusetts. But more so, 
Start redressing our pastors and the first ladies so that they can have a, a prosperous ministry that's at, that's out there evangelizing something of good and glory to be well seen and, and projected to the community. Because sometimes we do see these pastors as, you know, we put them up on a pulpit, we put them on a platform and, and we think of them as one way, but we want them to be seen as another way, as holy and acceptable. Amen? Right, even in their pastor. I tell you what, it's been a blessing to have you on the show today and just keep doing what you do because, you. because God is using you and he's, he's got a, a new place for you to go. You got your passport yet? Uh, I, I, I received that. That is actually, that's where my mind is. That is, that is that's where I know he's taking me. I know that is. I, I know for get fact. your passport, so. get ready, get ready, get ready because He's got bigger things for you to do. But remember your hometown. It's been a blessing having you here at The View from the Pew and 99.3 KTIA today. Justin Haynes, don't forget who made you who you are and be firmly foundationed in Christ. It's been a blessing having you today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.